Hello, my name is Luxala and today I'm talking with Nick Franks. He is a radionics practitioner from England, lives near Manchester and has been designing and producing devices that help people to get better. We could call them healing devices, but I'm going to ask him what this technology, which is based on radionics, all means. Hello, briefly, just briefly describe yourself. I am Nick Franks and I am a radionics practitioner and developer. I develop instruments and coding systems which are aimed to increase the efficiency of the radionic art. Well, that's quite a phrase already. You use the word radionics. What would you say radionics is? The I think the central proposition of radionics is that all living beings, although we are most particularly concerned with um, human beings, have a information field or bioinformation field, however you would like to describe it. And the essence of the art is to try and correct disturbances to that field which may cause symptoms in the physical body. And those disturbances could be mental, psychological, emotional or paraphysical level. Are you suggesting that there is something that we not normally perceive that influences us and that radiology is a way to influence this strange field, as you call it, um, that, that uh, helps us to balance our health, for, for instance. I would say that is correct. There are many ideas and have been for thousands of years about such fields. Uh, in the recent time period, a famous proponent is Rupert Sheldrake, who many people have heard of, who proposed morphogenetic fields, which he says are shape-creating fields, form-creating fields. However, no one has been able to pin this down, as it were, in a laboratory. Yes. You mean we cannot, with physical instruments, normal physical instruments, measure this? I think not. I couldn't be 100% sure because I was told recently that um, someone is claiming they're about to develop such an instrument. I think it's possible, but I don't know how to do it. So, the result of this field and the effect it has on our body is, is there, you assume in radionics, but what do you do then to make use of it? Well, I would claim it is within the gift of humans to be able to, a certain extent, limit unknown, go into this field and manipulate it for the purpose of correcting these disturbances. Okay, now we have senses, we can see, we can feel, we can hear, but here you talk about a sense for an unknown and, and, and not very physical field. Um, would you call that a sense? Well, it's been proposed for, again, for at least hundreds of years that we have a sense called the radiesthesic sense, from the word radiesthesia, which means I think touching at a distance. In radiesthesia itself is a large topic, but as far as many people understand it, it includes what is commonly known as pendulum dowsing. So what we do is we use the pendulum or some similar instruments, which I won't stick pad, and therefore we can somehow contact these information. So fields. this sense this, this extraordinary sense that uh, we not normally use is um, similar to what people call ESP? Extended sensory perception. Not extraordinary sens sensory perception. I think, I, I think it's not, a, um, not at all an unusual faculty. I think most human beings have this faculty except they've either been convinced and told they don't have it or they've never tried to use it yeah. and consequently they think it's some 
unusual or bizarre um, ability. Yeah. How, how would you re relate this to, say, intuition? Because most people accept they have some intuition, they know things. Some people call this, when this happens, it's synchronicity. But is intuition and radionics, is that in the same ballpark? Uh, I think it is, but I think um, when we're working with the radiesthesic method, with the pendulum, we are more close to having uh, an organized sense of what's going on. Intuition is, oh, I suddenly had a feeling that this, I had an intuition that that. In radionics, we take definite steps to attempt to measure. Whether so, you call it quantitative or qualitative is a different question. So you could say radionics is a way to harness our intuition or to, I wouldn't say box in, but, but kind of guide and focus. And, and focus is, is the right word? Yes. 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 To our intuition. Now, you yourself develop what we could call radionics devices, which are then, in my view, something like focus boxes for that intuition. Well, there's been, radionic instruments have been used for about 100 years, 110 years, and there's been constant criticism of them from orthodox uh, engineers, electronic engineers and so forth. And viewed strictly from uh, an orthodox point of view, and believe me, I had years in the electronic industry, you look at an a radionic box and there's many illogical things in it which do not make sense. But the typical radionic box, I would say, is actually a kind of three-dimensional adjustable symbol which allows you to focus your Okay. Uh, mental well, well, you call it a device, but I notice there's no electrical connection to the to the mains. No, some have electrical connection. There are many different ways of building these devices. Some use computers. Some use magnets. Some use an electrical connection. Uh, I don't use any of those things. I have a proprietary method, okay. which I which I think is amongst other things to help people focus their intuition, in order in your case, to look at the health situation uh, of a person, to see where there are unbalances and what can be done. Correct. And what we do is we, we have, it's not a random process where you say, what about this, what about that? You have a model, a large model of the human system, which you can work and test against. And one of the ways of accessing that model is using um, chart. We have a typical chart. Chart. And yes. what is happening is you have here location locations in the paraphysical and subtle body. So by paraphysical, I mean the counterparts of the physical body, so as well known, such as cardiovascular system, endocrine system, respiratory, etc. Here we have a more esoteric formulation where we say we have um, an emotional body, the astral body, a mental body, and so forth. And these correspond yeah, yeah. to states of So mind. you have created charts that kind of help the practitioner to figure out what happens with a peculiar person, where, where his problems might be, what is off balance. Um, now, this is the diagnostic part. Well, we should say analysis, but what we're doing is we're looking, you can see here, it's calibrated 0 to 100%, mm -hmm. and again mirrored on the outside. So what we do is we look at any location, such as respiratory system, and we say, what is the deviation from normal? So normal will be 0%, everything functioning perfectly. The higher the reading goes, broad, reading with the pendulum, broadly speaking, the more likelihood there is trouble. So, can we say you have refined the process of dowsing? Because for m many people, using a pendulum means asking questions yes or no, or, you know, or good or bad. 
but in your system I can see you can can not only say good or bad but a percentage and a direction and very much refined uh, and and focused on the problem at hand well the it's, it's argued that the most basic radio, uh, radiesthesic faculty is to find water underground. Then we go to things like uh, yes and no, etc. So people mm. take a pendulum and they say uh, whatever. And they get yes and no answers according to the pendulum movement. This is a rather more sophisticated and refined system where a picture of an uh, an analysis of the patient can be built up a picture which attempts to show where problems are and in many cases what appear to be problems physical problems paraphysical problems actually have their source in some other place such as emotional disturbances psychological disturbances okay so what we see in in medicine is mostly a symptomatic approach they say well you have a pain in your leg we're going to look at your leg and we try to use a, a procedure or a, a, drug. a drug or whatever to solve that. You say no. With radiologists in this approach, we look at the source of it. The, the pain in the knee might be related to an emotional or another factor that, that is much deeper. It could be. I mean, uh, the essence of um, orthodox medicine is... is to find, as far as possible, a simple chain of causality. This created this, so put a drug or a procedure in the middle to correct this. And this will work in a certain amount of cases. But normally, if you have the kind of people coming to you that I have, the cases are very complicated, and usually they have been through the orthodox medical route, and something has not worked. You mean... The typical clients you have are not coming because they have a broken leg or they, 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 something that is very clearly the work of a, a doctor who sees that as a traumatic incident. If someone comes with a broken leg, I say, please go to the hospital. Yes. You know, I don't do broken legs. But what might happen, for example, is you might have a situation where the bones do not knit, non-union of fractures. Then after a certain amount of time, you might want to do, try and do something about that. Okay, so, so you, your typical patients are the ones that go to the system and find out it doesn't work. And a, a word that comes to mind is, of course, autoimmune diseases. We have many, and the doctor will try this and try that, and they don't really know what it is because it's so... Yeah, the, the causes of it are very deep, but you say your system would allow you to diagnose or at least indicate where the problem is on a deeper level? I say it could help. Obviously, uh, in the final analysis, everything depends on the skill and knowledge of the practitioner. So the pendulum can point in a certain direction, but if you do not understand what it's pointing at, then you could still not really see the heart of the, the problem. Yeah, yeah. If we say that your radionics devices that you design and build are enhancers of intuition, uh, the person who starts with the intuition, which is the practitioner, needs to be aware or have to have a certain level of understanding of the medical situation. Well, I, I give you the, the example of the Stradivarius violin. You give me a Stradivarius and it's still going to sound terrible because I have no talent for violin playing. On the other hand, perhaps I have a talent for radionics, so the instruments will enhance the ability that I have. But you can give me a five million pound violin, it and makes no difference. Okay, so the, so the role of the practitioner is important. The level of his experience, his understanding. As in all things. As in all things, the average driver on the road is not going to get into a Formula One race and probably live, you know, etc, etc. Okay. Now, you design these uh, things, you build them, and you have experience in the electronics industry, so they look good and they, they have a certain uh, appeal. 
um, which I think is important because it looks like professional. I yeah. hope so. Yeah, but I understand that not only can you do a diagnosis with it, but you can use them to actually influence the person. Say, Absolutely. Yeah, let's not call it healing, but, but influence their imbalances. Yeah, and primarily it is what we call distant treatment. In the, they used to call it broadcasting, but there is no actual broadcast radio electronics involved. So call it distant treatment, and I can be sitting at you, you, home. You mean non-local? The, the non-local. Yeah. So that's, the person who is good, yeah. yeah. Now in physics, there is the non-locality principle, and we these days know that a certain act at a certain moment influences the rest of the world, but could also influence a specific particle. Yeah. This in quantum physics, you can have a this a particle with spin A and spin B, and these influence each other. So you're saying you, you, you work at a distance. The, the patient doesn't have to be there, but he has to be there in some way. Well, first need... of all, in general, I, would, I, I propose in my book, 21st Century Radionics, that much uh, background information as to how this could work can be drawn from modern physics. But it's too complex to go into here because it's a yep. big topic. So, what happens is, in practice, is a person might contact me from any place in the world or down the street and I say, send me a snip of your hair and this I can use as what is called a witness, in radionic terms, a witness. And the witness stands in for you personally and creates a link to the field. So, you, you talk about how to... Uh a hair or some DNA sample or, or even a picture? Well, pictures are not quite as good. For some reason, some actual uh, part of the body, it could be uh, a dried blood spot. It could be. But mostly people will send me a small snip of hair. Okay, and then you put that on the machine as like the input, yeah? Yeah. And then you ask the machine or you work with the machine uh, to tune to, to, to focus your intuition and you come with a diagnosis. And then you work through the chart. So, yes, you, you work to the, to the charts which are a number to different levels of, you know, the outside, inside, what part of the body, what... what yes, yeah, so uh, for example you could simply say, okay, nervous system in general, what is the degree of deviation from functional yeah. So if a person came with Parkinson's disease, which is a disease of the nervous system, you might in general see a 70, 80, 90% if the situation is bad. But now, now my feeling is that, uh, that looking at me, I'm, I'm not totally healthy, so you might find my heart is, you know, really off, but also my, my kidneys a little bit, and I have a pain in my leg, and I, 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 you know, I have headaches today. So how do you... Distinguish between the important and the non-important. Well, the first obvious thing is what is the highest reading? Then you say what is driving this location to have such a high reading? So then you may get referred to some other place, maybe the kidneys, maybe uh, something else. It depends. There is... In these charts, there is a, a large, in effect, a large matrix of possibilities. And here, not this one, so excuse me. For example, on this, on this one, we have a range of causations, which we call factors. And these are actually divided into 12 groups, which again I describe in the book. But these range from, from infections, inflammatory processes and uh, external stressors including for example electromagnetic stress um, environmental stress, situations environmental stress and it could be it could be for example that you have certain problems and in fact the underlying point is that you have been subjected to years of electromagnetic stress using sit, living near a phone mast or god knows what and these eventually disturb the system or 
you had some traumatic emotional experiences or whatever. So we look and we try and look and we try and find. Okay. Now, suppose you find uh, an, an enough precise diagnosis, say, okay, your, your main problem with your health is related to this and that and that. Now, what do you do then to, to create healing, to create a, a positive effect with these radionic devices? Well, the first thing that has to be remembered is that if the situation is complex, maybe you cannot run in and start treating uh, the heart of the problem or the center of the problem because it might be too much to ask the body to just revert to normality. So it could create a healing crisis. It could create. So you need to work very carefully. This is why I say this is, this is a real uh, highly skilled art. You have to know what to do. Um, and from this you can draw on a wide range of possible treatments and this is a chart for treatments. Yeah, so for instance you can use homeopathic treatments, you can use what I see the colors, you can use uh, uh, any, any, any traditional way also, like, like just drugs or vitamins or um, I divide treatments into basically two groups. First, I call presets, which are things which exist basically in nature. So homeopathic remedies are vibrational quanta drawn from things which exist in nature, such as the elements, chemicals, plants, herbs, da 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 da. And we have colours, and we have gems, crystals, minerals, we have... Um, flower essences, and so forth. The others I call commands, or are called commands, therapeutic commands. And therapeutic commands are, are pure radionic treatments, and I think mostly only exist in radionics, which are instructions to the body to do a certain thing, such as, for example, detoxify colon detoxify liver. Yeah, but that does not... So you don't use a physical substance to do that? You just you create, tell your machine, or the machine acts like... Now, I know that, for instance, in, in cancer treatments, people try to visualize a, a treatment. So how does that compare to this? Well, visualization, particularly if you're ill with cancer, it could be quite a stressful process. In radionics, we're using the instrument as a kind of sample and hold device to stand in for your intention. And I, it's my belief that, the, largely speaking, the kind of treatments we can create, not necessarily that we do create, but we can create, are much more powerful than simple visualizations. The potential is there. I'm not saying everyone... No, no, no. Pe people use visualization to, to look at, in their mind, to look at cells yeah, or... But also, whatever. you can use visualization if you want, but this is not radionics. Okay. Now, um, the, the therapeutic commands basically are saying in the field, which I talked about earlier, in the field, the situation of your respiratory system is that a virus, to keep it simple, a virus has attacked it. Flu virus or whatever. So you are basically giving an instruction through the field to say, okay, eliminate that virus and do what is necessary. So you might have to try and instruct the immune system, you might have to instruct the respiratory system, etc, etc. Mm -hmm. This is very lengthy and large. There's a lot to be done here. But you also create, with your machine, by using water or whatever substance, you create what we could call homeopathic or, or remedies in general that do the work. It is certainly correct. You can download uh, any of these um, energy patterns from the field and put them into 
water, for example, as a typical carrier, or pills, Sacklac pills, and use them as treat oral oral uh, oral treatment. treatment. So yeah. you can send it to the person and say, take these once yeah. a day or whatever. But I rarely do that. I mostly do it by distant process. But some people do uh, manufacture a lot of homeopathic remedies. Now, there's there's controversy in homeopathic uh, medicine, of course. Some homeopaths do not like radionically manufactured remedies. They say they're not as good as pharmacy remedies. I say it's possible to get it right using radionic instruments. Again, this is a very detailed discussion, yeah, but I just but mentioned it. The, 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 the resonance between homeopathic and radionics is that both work in a field, a space, uh, what do you call it, a dimension, which is not our normal space-time. Yeah, I would say essentially um, what a radionic remedy does is it acts, sorry, a, homeo or a radionic or a homeopathic remedy does, it acts as a key, a physical remedy, it acts as a key which links you to the point in the field. And if you read the theory of homeopathy very, very, very carefully, the founder, Hahnemann, actually more or less says that, except in his 19th century terminology. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could say that homeopathy tries to eliminate the material part in any, in any remedy, and the less material baggage, luggage there is, the more effective it works. So it's all about information. That's a big. That's that, that's a very very big discussion, and it's not correct that it's more effective if it's more, more highly potentized. What is the most important thing in homeopathy, is that the remedy, picture should be similar to the patient's symptoms. Okay. You can give a person any remedy, at any potency if it's not similar to their. Symptoms. It won't. It won't. It won't do anything. It probably won't do anything. You might get some little reaction. But. Okay. Now, so you work with radionics. You have uh, designed radionics devices. Um, the question is, why is isn't the world using this? Why is this a, a relatively small um, niche in the healing field? In uh, radionics originated in the United States in the period of about 1900 to 1920 with the work of Dr. Albert Abrams, who was regarded 50% as a medical genius and 50% as a medical fraud. And the second uh, person who followed, really followed Abrams, was Dr. Ruth Drown, a chiropractor in Hollywood. And Drown on her own account, had great success that uh, she was a little bit too boastful about how she, how she had uh, succeeded. And eventually, at the age of 70, she was put into prison. This was about 1960, 65, 70, something like that. The situation was different. But these were the days that, for instance, for instance Wilhelm Reich, with his orgone therapy also was yeah, not the only Not the only system that was persecuted, you yeah. know, uh, colour therapy and so on. Uh, the situation was different in Britain. Radionics came to Britain about 1924 and there was a trial in about 1965 with Delaware and he was acquitted. So radionics continued to be legal, although it is not viewed as anything more than a fantasia and medical fraud. And to this day, if you read Wikipedia, it's full of the same basic criticisms that were levelled at uh, homeopathy. Abrams. No, forget. <laughs> well, they also homeopathy, but at Abrams a hundred years ago.